Hello YouTube, this is Back of the Boats, and today we are going to be, this is going to be a different video, and we are going to be discussing engine sounds. Now if you're a petrol head, or a gear head, or however you want to call it, you're going to love the sounds of engines. It doesn't matter if, if it's not even an engine, if it's an electric motor, if it's a jet engine, or if it's a gasoline engine, diesel engine, a Bugatti Veyron, Sports cars like the Ferrari 458 Italia, McLaren P1, Porsche 918, or if you're American and you like the classic V8 burble of muscle cars like the Mustang, Shelby GT500, the Camaro Z28, the Corvette, or if you like the sound of Ricer, if you're a Ricer and you like the sound of Honda Civics and inline fours and Suzuka Hayabusa's and Yamaha R1's, which I'll be discussing, discussing in this video. Now, pardon my stuttering because I'm gonna have a habit of doing that a lot, so bear with me. So, the two parts to the engine sound is the primary sound, which is the sound of the fuel igniting, regardless if it's a spark plug or if it's spontaneous combustion like in a diesel, because it's still igniting, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. And the secondary sound, the mechanical sound such as valves, pistons moving up and down, etc. Even wankle rotaries moving around, that's not produced by the ignition of the fuel. That's what the secondary sound is. Now, if, if there is the same number or multiple of that number of cylinders, rotors, etc., the overall harmony pitch, which is the combination of the primary and secondary sounds, will sound the same regardless of the idle sound and regardless of the type of engine as long as it is the same number or same multiple of that number of cylinders or rotors or whatever. The secondary sound of every engine is always the same. And alone, it just sounds like a V-twin, like a Ducati or a Harley. It is the primary sound that people actually listen to and it's the one that is really differentiated between different kinds of engines. Any odd firing engine, like a V8 crossplane, or an X6, S65 AMG V12 by Turbo, or a 6.8 Triton V10 from Ford, or even a Audi 5.2 liter V10 that was once used in the S8 and the S6 and the RS6, or even the Aston Martin 5.9 V12, has two primary sounds. The second primary sound being the same pitch as the second secondary sound and will be as predominant if not louder than the primary sound and as I mentioned before V8s. So I'll be showing you a bunch of examples of how similar certain kinds of engines are to one another and how you can differentiate what kind of engine it is without actually them telling you now, usually people like can distinguish V8s upon everything, but not if it's a flat plane, and that will be explained right now. So, if there is a number of cylinders or rotors that is a multiple of four, then and it's an even firing or a flat plane crank, the primary sound will be an octave higher than the secondary sound. So, whether it's an inline 4, V4, V8, W16, V16, or whatever multiple of 4, if it has a flat plane crank and even firing orders, it's going to sound the same at 9000 RPM regardless. They're all going to sound the same at 9000 RPM. However, an example of this is um, the, um, the Ferrari 458, or pretty much any Ferrari V8, the McLaren P1, any McLaren, the Porsche 918, and any inline 4 as what people might consider racers, like Honda Civics, or people made by racers, or cars made by racers, sorry. So I will be showing you an example of these kinds of engines. Let's gonna, we're going to start with the Ferrari 4 v Italia. We're going to listen to its acceleration, then we're going to play the Honda S2000, we're going to listen to that acceleration, and listen closely, 
they're gonna all be revving pretty much at 9,000 RPM. They're gonna sound almost identical. Here we go. And by the way, credits to every single account that made any any of these videos right here. listen to the S2000. Remember, the Ferrari had a V8. This has an inline 4, but you'll be surprised how identical it sounds. Now let's listen. Okay, we'll stop there since it's getting quieter. Now, I don't know about you, but I thought they sounded pretty identical. Well, that's coming from a musician who could distinguish notes. But if you don't know anything about music theory, that's okay. But try listening to them again. Go back in the video. Listen to them. Listen to the difference. Now, I don't have a motorcycle with me here or a Suzuki Hayabusa or Kawasaki that I could com play in comparison because a Kawasaki pretty much sounds like any of these engines except it redlines at like 16,000 RPM instead of 9,000 so it's going to be a higher pitch but nevertheless the same ratio now let's go back to cross-plane crankshafts on the other hand are odd firing that's really important Odd firing, the primary sound is two octaves higher than the secondary primary sound. And that goes for all odd firing engines. Also, the way you could distinguish it's an odd firing engine is if it's a if the, if you hear a burble in this in the exhaust. Now, typically there's exhausts that make a burble, even though it's there's not really a burble. But if you hear a burble and it's a straight pipe. It doesn't sound like a string, it sounds like a, you know, like drums, like a burble. That's when you could tell it's a cross-plane crank. Now, I'm going to show you an example of one of the only cross-plane inline fours ever, which is the Yamaha R1, and a typical muscle car. And you're good, and it's a dyno video, so it's going to be a bit different, but listen to how identical they sound, except that, of course, the Yamaha R1 red lines at, like, 16,000 RPM while the Mustang only red lines at 7,000. So, but here's gonna be the difference. If that already sounded like a V8, because V8s are easily distinguishable, then you're on par. Now let's listen to a typical muscle car and listen to the dyno sound of that. They're going to sound exactly alike, except this one's going to sound lower pitch because it doesn't rev as high. <laughs> Okay, now moving on, we will move to the multiples of three. An inline three, a V6, an inline six, a flat six, a V12, a W12, W9, or any multiple of three. Now the primary sound is four steps higher, or an octave plus four steps. Now if you took music theory, you know what that means. If you haven't, that means that well, you're going to find out in the video, because it's hard to explain. S anyway, yes, that means that if you accelerate a smart car at 6,000 RPM, 
and you accelerate an Aston Martin V12 at 6,000 RPM and disregard the burble in the Aston Martin since it's odd firing, they're going to sound, they're going to have the same exact pitch, believe it or not. So you could take a really cheap Toyota Camry V6 and then you could modify it so that when you accelerate, it's going to sound just like a V12 supercar. And that's due to this, to the multiple of three. And you could do that same with the smart car. Now notice, you could do it with exhaust systems only if it's a multiple of three. But you can't make a V6, for example, sound like a V8 like I see on YouTube cars. Sure, they're, the idle sound's going to be the same, but not the overall sound. They're not going to be the same. The easiest way is to do the inline four. So let's listen to a bunch of V6 sounds and compare it with a V12 Lamborghini. Here we go. Okay, now if that sounded sporty to you, we're, we're going to take a listen to the Lamborghini Murcielago, and you're going to be surprised at how similar they sound. And this could give faith in you, because if you put your exhaust in your V6 supercar, or not V6 supercar, an ordinary V6 car like a Toyota Camry, and you put a special exhaust in it, it's going to sound just like this. <laughs> If that didn't sound familiar, I don't know what, but we are going to go back. So, the last thing we're going to be talking about is the inline 5, or any multiple 5 like a V10. Now, so stuff like, mostly V10s are odd firing, like the Dodge Viper, or any American V10, or even the Acura V10 that they used in the NSX before they cancelled it. So, the inline 5, like in the Volvo or the Focus RS, everyone thinks that sounds like a V10. And then everyone likes the sound of a V10, they think it sounds like a Formula 1 car. Why? Because Formula 1, they had V10 for the longest, and it pretty much defined the sound of racing. So whenever you hear that, and it's also the rarest kind of engine. V6s are kind of boring because they're really common. And then V8s are common too, even though everyone likes the sound of them because they're a mix of low pitch and high pitch. V10s, people like them because they're more exclusive, even though they're cheaper than V6s, but you just can't find them. So we're gonna be going to see that right now. Let's listen to a Focus RS accelerate, and then we're gonna compare it to an Audi R8 V10, and you are gonna listen closely how similar they sound. Okay. Now, let's listen to the Audi R8 V10. Now, everyone knows the sound of this, so you're going to be surprised how identical they sound. <laughs> So, as I said before, all, if you listen closely to all the engines, all the secondary sound has the same exact pitch as this, the Harley Davidson, because it's a V-twin, or a Ducati, or any V-twin, art firing or not. 
So, here, I'll give you an example. If you listen to this, it's going to kind of sound like a V8 because the V8 secondary sound is more predominant, like I mentioned earlier. But if you listen to your everyday engine and you rev it up as high as this, which is not likely because this revs at like 10,000 RPM, then you could hear that they're the same pitch. Now, an ordinary gearhead would normally not pay attention to this and probably wouldn't care, but this is just an interesting fact. So there's an example. This video has been inspired by one of the videos called Cross Plane Four Cylinder Engines and Cars by JP Channel 100. I'm going to put that channel and that that video in the link below because that video barely has any views and it deserves so much views because I believe inline four cylinder engines should be implemented in automobiles like him and it's a good reason why everyone's complaining about inline four how unrefined it is how terrible it sounds and they're going to be putting it in the mustang which i personally don't like and most people don't like that either so if they put a cross plane inline four with a turbo in the mustang it's going to sound like it's always been except for the startup it's gonna sound like a V8. That's why the later generation Subaru STIs, they kinda sound like a bread of ricers and muscle cars because it's an odd firing car. Now the 2015 model has an exhaust system that makes it really sound like a muscle car, or in my opinion. And then there's AMG, which always makes it sound like a muscle car because of its odd firing V12. Also, if you listen to diesel engines, which I haven't mentioned in the video, even though they rev lower, they're going to sound a bit different, but if you rev the gas engine to that much, it's going to sound the same too, except it's not going to sound like it's trying that hard. So, um, thanks for watching, subscribe for, subscribe for more videos, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, sorry for stuttering. Oh well. Well... I'll see you whenever I make a new video. Don't forget to subscribe to JP Channel 100 and his video, his underrated video on a cross-plane four-cylinder engine in cars. And cop, and then all all copyright or all ownership to those videos go to the the respective YouTube owner or the respective YouTube channel. So um, thank you for your time. Okay, bye.